though, was already tested on Sandbox earlier this year. When was it actually? It was in February. So it has been, it's been five months, pretty much. Five months. It's been five months. Compared to the current crew, it had quite a lot of changes. It did. The crew became an integral whole, but kept its individuality. Skills and perks were revised. Sure. Talents, instructors, and many other things were added. Sure. All these changes raised many questions from you. Yeah. And we're grateful. Hi, I need to see that graph quickly. What is that graph? So I guess one of these lines will be old progression and one of these lines will be new progression. So Wargaming's idea is, um, this is, this is how good wargaming think that you're going to be and how much experience it's going to require right so effectively how oh, this is pretty crazy wargaming are trying to suggest that there are other levels that you can manage to go through to get better and better and better so all you really need to know is that that's one skill pretty much that's two that's three that's four that's five that's six that's seven that's eight okay so twitch when you look at this graph okay that that's one skill, two skill, three skill, four skill, five skill. Okay, Twitch, what is your most skilled crew that isn't Brothers in Arms crew? How many skills have you managed to get up to? For me, it's six. For me, I've managed to get to six skills. So there's somebody out there who's seven. Most people saying five, four, three, five. It looks Welcome. to me as if excluding Brothers in Arms hardly anybody has got above five do you know why because to be able to get above five or six you have to be very very sweaty indeed when you look at a graph like this it looks very interesting because you think like wow look i can reach up there okay but here's the i'm going to show you what the reality of what you've been able to achieve and where you're most likely to be able to get at least with how it was previously later on I'm grateful for your response now it's time to launch the second sandbox for Crew 2.0 and tell you what changes we've added to the new iteration of testing based on your feedback. It's it's really nice when Wargaming first... it's really nice when Wargaming suggests that they're really listening to our feedback. So I'm truly hoping that all of the bad and the ugly things have been addressed. That's what I'm hoping. Sandbox. There was plenty of feedback that the crew didn't get the experience of a zero perk when converting it from the old crew to a new crew. We well, I guess if you're a player who has a lot of those kind of crews, then that that is fantastic. It, it'll be it'll be good for people if wargaming change uh, the amount of experience that you get. What the issue was is that if you have brothers in arms, wargaming didn't actually count that as a crew skill on the first iteration of the sandbox test server. Now it looks like if you do well, you take it away, a wargaming. Take that into account, and now zero perks are considered when calculating experience. After conversion, you'll receive the crew and instructors of the same mastery level. Okay, so that is incredibly powerful. Do you know why that's incredibly powerful? That pretty much means um, that if you have crew members with brothers in arms, they are going to have a whole... They're going to have, like... At the moment, they get <coughs> brothers in arms for free. But it's going to be the equivalent of propelling them one level forwards as well, which is going to be outrageous. Mastery level. The skills and perks have been changed as well. We moved the effects of all skills and perks of the old crew to the new system and adjusted them so that the new crew is at the same level or more often even better than its old analog in terms of characteristics. Interesting. Now upon conversion, you immediately get a new crew with all the features of the old set of skills and perks. I'm very much looking forward to seeing that. sure that you won't lose your combat effectiveness. Okay, so that was one of my big points. One of my big points was that conversion of the crew goes from having three to four skills and it'll become 40 or 50 points. And I really hope that for a three to four skill crew is gonna be just as competitive. If the old set doesn't suit you for the new crew, you can reset... I should probably write down Wargaming's changes as well. I'm going to move this over here and I'm going to be writing down what their changes are. They'll probably have them on their website. Skills for the first time for free. Nice. We distribute the points and create a crew for your own playstyle. There are enough combinations of skills. Also, you paid attention to the lack of commander's bonus in the new crew. We solved this problem. Now any crew will have three skills by default. Six. Sorry, any crew will have three skills by default. What do they mean? What, what does that mean? We solved this problem. Now any crew will have three skills by default. Oh, okay. Six cents. Oh, okay. The light bulb familiar to everyone. Triangulation, the renamed sound detection perk. 
it's pretty much useless. The triangulation is almost useless. It's like a meme. A mentor. That very a meme. Useless. So the only thing that's useful out of this was six cents. Wargaming, you haven't changed anything. That was one of that was first on my list of good last time. There's there's nothing. That that it's irrelevant. Commander's bonus. The maximum number of skill points of main crew progression has been increased from 75 to 80. So they've made it harder this to progress? Way, you'll have the opportunity to train eight skills to the full extent. Oh, okay. No, I get it. I get it. I get it. So what they've done is they've made it 80 so that you've got enough points to be able to get eight skills fully trained. I like that. I like that. So they basically rescaled it. And so they've changed the system so that you now have 80 points to spend instead of 75. That's cool. Fun fact. The amount of experience required to reach the maximum level remains the same. Okay. This equals the amount of XP to fully train five skills or perks in the old crew system. Okay. Fully train five skills or perks. Fully train five skills or perks. So if you want to have every skill, you're going to have to have had the equivalent of a six skill crew in the old system. All right. So Twitch, we had what looks like nearly, I don't know, uh, 500, 600. We had about 700 people respond to what is your most non-Brothers in Arms skilled crew. So 43% of people say four, 28% of people say five, 17% of people say three or less. Ouch. 8% um, of people say six and 4% of people say seven. Okay, so I, I bet you that some people don't understand what Brothers in Arms is with Seven, but maybe they do. Maybe they do. Maybe I'm speaking out of my ass. Maybe these are the kind of people who play 20,000 games in the Tiger P. What we have just found, however, is that 88% of the people who replied, even with their most skilled crew, will not have all 80 points. 88% of people who just responded, even with their most skilled crew, will not have 80 points in crew 2.0. 88% of all of you out there who took part in the survey, you won't have all 80 points. So take that into account later on when we talk about how important it is to be able to have all 80 points. When training your crew over level 80, you can't use crew books anymore. So, previously, once you got to 80, you could use crew books to be able to boost your progress. And what did you get after you got level 80, you might be asking? Well, you just got extra crew skill, which was one of my, one of my points which I didn't even write down. Um, end up with more crew skill than other players, which I've got here as well now. It's done to make the crew training fair for both. Okay, it's done to make the crew training fair for both players who have the opportunity of using crew books. So Wargaming have basically made it so you can't use crew books to go beyond level 80. Both the players who have the opportunity of using crew books and those who will train the tankers on their own. Okay, Twitch, do you want to know one of the most hilarious things that I just noticed about this? Hilarious. From this video, you'd think, oh, that's a good change. Everybody will have to grind. Okay, so Twitch. My crew have reached level 80, and I can no longer use crew books to be able to get to the prestige beyond level 80. But what I can do is I can use free experience. So I could spend 47,000 free experience to boost my crew from level 80 to level 80 plus one. So, of course, Wargaming say in their video that they've made it so you can't use credits you can't use crew books. Effectively, you can't use credits. But what you can do, on the other hand, is you can use your free experience to be able to boost up to the next level. To go from level 80 to level 80 plus 1, it costs 47,000 free experience. And just like that, now my crew have 3% increased vehicle handling, which actually means crew skill in the new crew system, unless Wargaming have changed it. As far as I am aware, vehicle handling is the equivalent of crew skill, 
And because I just spent 47,000 free experience on this crew, my crew now have 3% better crew experience than everybody else. That is the equivalent of having 60% of an imp like an a ventilation on this tank. So by spending that free experience on my crew after I've managed to grind to 80, which remember is the equivalent of having a six skill crew in the current system of the game, then I can spend 47,000 free experience to be able to just be 3% crew skill better than everybody else. And remember, this is on one of your tanks. One of your tanks. I'd be surprised if most dedicated players don't have like uh, 50 tanks. 100 tanks, 200 tanks. Imagine if, for one level, it's going to cost you 47,000 experience to be able to get 3% crew skill on one of your vehicles. How much is it going to cost the next time? The next time, it's 100,000. How much crew still? How much crew skill do I get for another 100,000 that I just spent? I got another 3%. So I've just spent 147,000 free experience, and my tank is now 6% better than everybody else. Well, actually, no, let me take that back. It's not quite 6% because it's 6% crew skill. 6% crew skill means 3% better than everybody else. I have the equivalent of an extra ventilation than every other player, and it costs 150,000 free experience. I'm now 81 plus 2, but I can go more. Next time, it's 200,000 free experience. 200,000 free experience to go to the next level. And then I can go another level beyond that as well. It, it scales up and up. And eventually, well, we'll find out. Okay, so I'm going to spend another 200,000 free experience. What happens now? So I've got 3% crew skill, 3% crew skill, now 2% crew skill. Now we're up to 8% crew skill. Now I have to spend 350,000 experience. What's that going to get me? Another two, so we're up to 10% crew skill. That's the equivalent of having a premium consumable on this tank now. And the next one, the final one, costs a million. Or is this even the final one? I don't even know anymore. No, it's not the final one. Now we just spent a million free experience. Now we're 12% better than everybody else. Well, 12% crew skill better. Now we have to spend 2 million free experience. And the final level makes me 1% better than everybody else. So unless I'm mistaken, I now have 13% extra crew skill than everybody else. Oh no, it can go more! 3 million free experience! Woo 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 woo! Another 1% crew skill! 4 million free experience? Fifteen percent crew skill. Okay. To put that into perspective, that is the equivalent of having two bounty vents on your tank. Two bounty vents on your tank more than everybody else. Or it's the equivalent of having one and a half premium consumables more than everybody else. It's insane. It's actual insanity. To be fair, nobody is going to go that far. You don't know the people who have played like 20,000 games in tanks. I see them all the time. I see people who have played 20,000 games in the ELC Even 90. I've seen people who have played 20,000 games in a Tiger P. Remember, we just held a poll and there were... 27 people out there who have seven skill regular crews and I know that at least a few of them are going to be eight skills Those people on day one will have a tank that is literally 15% better than yours with regards to crew skill and crew skill corresponds to making your vehicle half a percent better those players are going to be 7.5% better than you. So when Wargaming say in their video, I mean, th this is just for me, just the the the, the, the epitome. It, it's, it's a complete paradox. And it's, it's insane. When they say, for example, when training your crews over level 80, you can't use crew books anymore, which was credits, fine. But, and they say this is done to make crew training fair for both players who have the opportunity of using crew books 
and players who want to train the tankers on their own. But they're still allowing you to spend free experience, which let's be honest, is probably the biggest premium currency, the darkest market of World of Tanks, are people who go in and convert free experience. Wargaming are realizing now it's not enough to try and get them to spend their free experience on eliting vehicles that are stock. Now they want you to spend your free experience on the hundreds of crews that you have to be able to be better than everybody else. It's insane. The sum of bonuses to vehicle handling at the professional expertise stage is reduced to 15%. Okay, so what did they reduce it from? So they reduced it from 21% to 15%? Is that what they're saying? This is... So a free-to-play player will never have the same advantages as a paying player. Never. More money in the bank for WG. You could, it, it, it would be impossible for you to start World of Tanks today and be just as competitive as someone who's been playing the whole time. It'd be impossible now. It's done to balance the boost to the crew effectiveness during training. I'm sorry, Wargaming, but this isn't to balance. This isn't balanced. This isn't balanced. Reducing it from 21% to 15% is not balanced. It's not balanced. It's madness. I don't usually get so frustrated. It's, it's legit madness. This will kill the game. Legitimately. They think that we're stupid and they want to pull the wool over our eyes. It's insane. You're... I can't... I have to just, I have to, I have to just even like, uh, I have to, to paint a picture here for, for two. I really want all of you to understand because I really don't think that some people are understanding exactly what this is. Okay. So the, let me paint this as to what this is. Okay. So to be able to get to here, okay, this is to be able to get to this level, you need about six crew skills in World of Tanks right now. Okay. So you need to get to this level here before you've, Make me make that bigger. To be able to get to here, which we're going to call the starting post, before you then have to grind and grind and grind and grind and grind and grind and grind to be competitive, you have to have the equivalent of a six skill crew currently in the game, as in in the, in, in the current patch, before you've even got to the starting uh, post, okay? It's, it's, it's insane. And then to be able to get 15% crew skill, which equals, I'm, I am seven and a half percent better. I'm a seven and a half percent better. I'm seven and a half percent better because I've made it through there. And then for Wargaming to have the audacity to say that they've rebalanced this to make it fairer when you already have an insurmountable level to be able to get towards before you've even got to the starting line, before then you have to grind through to be able to get into a competitive sense, is insane. It's, it's actual insanity. It's actual insanity. And I, I just find this patronizing. I really do. The idea that they've changed it from 21% to a 15% crew skill advantage once you've got past six skills. I'm angry about it because I bloody love this game and I've invested so much time into this over 10 years. And the idea now that none of my crews are going to actually be competitive compared to that one Thank person you. who's just played that one tank the whole time. We also heard your feedback and reworked instructors. Okay, so just to talk about the instructors previously, the instructors... You had to open them like FIFA packs and then you randomly managed to get... Adding the instructions. You managed to randomly get like extra features on them. So when I put that inside the Word document that I had, uh, yeah, I called it Instructors are RNG like FIFA packs, where they actually further increase the advantages. And the instructors are basically give further huge advantages to players because you can manage to be able to, to get them to further increase your crew skills, as I'm going to be explaining in a bit to the crew, you can select their certification, nation, if it's not predetermined, and bonus skills of the selected training course until you click apply. So this is really interesting. Wargaming are making changes so that the instructor will give five points if the crew level is zero to nine, and then it will only give two points above the limit. So as far as I'm aware, Wargaming have made it so that the, the ceiling of the skill level that you can have is... Um, the ceiling of the skill level that you can have is 12, as far as I can remember. Now you define the skills you want to improve yourself. The only limitation is that all instructor skills should correspond to the certification you choose. So I think this is a the good change. Skills of instructors I think this is a good change because I, I hated the RNG in it like it was like FIFA packs. 
But here's the problem. Not everybody has enough instructors to be able to put them on all of your different tanks. The Bale says, oh, come on, Kibio, are complaining about spending thousands of gold to get an advantage of 7.5% skill when you press the two key every day to gain a 10 to 20% advantage. Uh, look, you, you be, here's the thing, mate. Firstly, you're talking about something beside the point and completely irrelevant. Gold spam is in the game. It's been there since the beginning. What I'm trying to do is to try and wake people up to the point that we're going to have even more disparity between the players. We're going to have even more difference. Gold spam is in the game. We can't do anything about it. The game was developed based on gold spam. There's no doubt about it. But this is a whole new level of pay, pay to win going into the game that we don't have. That's a big difference. Of the unique crews, such as Sabaton or the Offspring, are assigned automatically. They are given the skills with bonuses that are most required for their vehicles. Additionally, the principle of instructor skill points distribution has also changed. Instructors and directives now either add bonus points to a particular skill when the level of this skill is below 10, or increase the maximum level of its training if the level of this skill is 10 or more. Interesting. Increase the maximum level of its training, but they don't say it's only up to 12, I believe. The instructor's class names were changed. Instead of class 1, 2, and 3, they are now standard, valuable, and unique instructors. The first take up one crew slot. They provide a small bonus to one skill and increase the amount of XP that crew receives by 10%. Okay, so Wargaming are going to make it so that you can get 10% more experience if you have an instructor. Valuable instructors take up two crew slots. They provide significant bonus to two skills and increase the amount of crew XP by 40%. 40%? So they're going to be like the equivalent of nearly a premium tank? Hold on. So you're telling me that instructors are going to allow people who have paid to have fancy crews to be able to grind up quicker. And finally, unique instructors are the members of special group crews, such as Sabaton or the Offspring. They take up all four crew slots, provide great bonus to three skills, and increase the amount of crew XP by 100%. So what Wargaming are basically saying is that they want you to buy multiple... Wargaming know perfectly well that currently people buy multiple tanks to be able to get multiple Brothers in Arms crews inside the game. Now what Wargaming are effectively saying is that if you want to get 100% extra experience so that you can get better faster, that you should buy multiple Sabaton crews and then you should use them to be able to train your crew up faster so that then you're better quicker. With instructor bonuses and a directive, you can train skill points up to level 15. How, 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 how do I get them up to 15? So, how does it and do a directive. it? So, how, how is this one all doing four? And then this one is doing that. So you need to have loads of different instructors? you can train skill points up to level 15. So you can still go to 15, but you can't do it with a single instructor. What's even better is that now all bonus points provide the same skill boost. Finally, we revise the amount of XP that is lost when retraining the crew for free or for- It's still minus 200% experience of the current crew. That sounds insane. Minus 100% experience of the current crew, that's 336,000. Uh, so you want to lose like 300 battles for your four skill crew? Go ahead. Credits. Now less XP is lost. And by the way, it's 750 gold to retrain a single crew for the T100LT. Just to put that into perspective, previously the T100LT, because it had three crew members, would have never have cost you more than 600 gold. Now it will cost you 750. And that is for resetting the skills. So if you, if, let's say that Wargaming nerf a tank and you suddenly want to change all of the different skills that you've assigned, it looks like you're going to have to pay 750 gold to be able to do that. Or maybe you just want to play the tank differently. Good bloody luck. 750 gold. Especially at the late training stages. Come we continue testing Crew 2.0 together with you. 
This is a crucial new feature, and as always, we need your feedback. Yeah. Join the sandbox, take part in testing, sure. and share your comments. More details about the second iteration of Crew 2.0 are available in the special news article linked in the description to this video. Okay, Twitch. So, it's really important. You, watching today, are either part of the Twitch community, my community, or more importantly, you're part of the World of Tanks community. It's very, very, very important that you go onto the Sandbox test server, you download it, and you play some games. Because I have a funny feeling the only feedback that Wargaming are truly going to listen to if the HE changes are anything to come by is from the surveys that will appear in your garage from playing on the Sandbox test server. So ladies and gents, you must download the Sandbox test server. You must play a few games. Then you will have a survey that comes up and then you must give your feedback. Because last time Wargaming said that 70% of people loved the HE changes, for example. Whereas in surveys that I ran personally, it was more like 70% of people didn't like the changes. So whether you like Crew 2.0 or whether you hate Crew 2.0, it's very important that you deliver your feedback efficiently. And you all being here is not going to make a difference. Hopefully in today's video, I'm going to be able to demystify some of the more complicated aspects or maybe highlight some of the ones that are going to be more dubious to you that are going to really mess the game up and it honestly this is one of those things that if it happens if it happens it it, it just could straight up be the death of you being competitive in world of tanks especially if you're a very serious player who plays for like three marks of excellence or plays clan wars or something like that and i don't really feel like i'm being sensational i i legitimately feel that way